Hello and welcome to today's video. Today we are here for the racing debrief. And oh boy, do we have an interesting weekend of racing to talk about. But first, we gotta get into some of the news topics, things that broke in the last week. So, starting off, we actually have to talk about last Sunday, Talladega. Uh, Kevin Harvick got disqualified after. We didn't get to talk about it on the racing debrief because I recorded that video uh, basically in between the time of the end of the race and inspection being done uh, in that probably two-hour window. So uh, looking at that, they found uh, that some of these screws in the window on the front were uh, loosened. So, of course, that can benefit... Uh, aerodynamically, so that was a disqualification. Unfortunately, that was a great performance. Um, you know, in the moment, it was definitely um, a difficult race. Looking back on it, though, thinking how much worse that would have been had he won and then got disqualified. Um, so I guess coming up short there was the better outcome. But, um, yeah, just overall, just added to the disappointment of that day, I guess. Um, looking next, though, we go to uh, other news this week. Uh, big news that Haley Deegan's moving to the Xfinity Series. Um, and I feel like that's honestly a good move for her. I know some people are like, oh, she didn't do anything in trucks. But I don't think that trucks is necessarily the best development spot. I mean, it can be. Some drivers can do great in trucks and then move up to Xfinity and do good. And some can move from Xfinity to Cup. But some drivers, the aerodynamics of the truck and the way that they are and the way you race in that series doesn't click. And it's not necessarily the best development series. You know, trucks wasn't built initially to be a development series. Um, you know, it kind of evolved into that. But I think something like the truck series, like, not all the drivers, you know, click with it. Not all the drivers have it work out for them. Um... Uh, I think for her, it's just something doesn't click with racing in the trucks, uh, whatever that is. Uh, I don't think she's a bad driver. I think that she just doesn't go well with the way they race. They're very much just hold it flat through the corners and go. Um, and with the experience that she has, um, you know, doing some dirt racing, that type of discipline, that's not necessarily the way that you race. You don't just hold the gas straight through a corner and go. So I think that Xfinity will be better for her. I mean, her one star in it, she finished, what, 13th? Solid debut. Uh, but you see a lot of drivers don't necessarily do a season of trucks or multiple. Uh, it's kind of just do Xfinity, do Cup, right? Like... You can do trucks. A lot of drivers will go race it part time. You know, try to learn a track a little bit. But lots of times, drivers will skip trucks. As a, you know, the stepping stone to the Cup Series really should just be Xfinity. You know, that's the thing. You go to Xfinity and then you step up to Cup. You know, that's the thing. I think that you look at drivers. I mean, recently, you know, last year, Ty Gibbs had done a few Xfinity races the year before. Did really well. And he won his first start. The first driver in the modern era to win a race in any of the national series. And debut in general. Um, in all three. First top three national series start uh, with a win in that time. So, you know, you look at something like that. He didn't do that. He just went, started in Xfinity. Won that first race at Hunter Road Course in 2021. Went and won more races that year. Did 2022 full time into Cup, and you see a lot of drivers that they just jump to Xfinity, right? They'll do ARCA to Xfinity. Um, you know, you had drivers, you know, a lot of drivers, you know, recent champions that are you know the younger drivers like Chase Elliott, Kyle Larson. They didn't do full season. They might have done some races in trucks, but they didn't do full seasons. It was just full season Xfinity into Cup, and I think that that's the route you have to take. I think that's the better route, and for her, I think that will work out. So I'm looking forward to seeing what she does in 2024 um, in the Xfinity Series. The other news for racing this week, big news and something I'm excited for personally uh, for multiple reasons. 
is that the NASCAR gaming license has been bought for Motorsport Games by iRacing, and I'm looking forward to that, seeing what happens. Of course, iRacing was basically what evolved from the companies that used to make some of the old NASCAR games um, in our 2003, something like that. Basically, they evolved into iRacing, and now they have the license for it, which the exclusive license is what took that away from them in 2003 when EA just took over and said, nah, we're doing it all. Um, so, you know, if they can get a racing game to bring it back for NASCAR to be on the level of those games, like NR2003, like some of the EA games from 2004, 2005. I mean, I love NASCAR 2005, Chase of the Cup. That game, brilliant. I mean, we played it on the channel more recently um, once I got an adapter for my GameCube. So, I've always loved playing those games. I love playing NASCAR games. And I want to be able to play that on this channel. I mean, this channel mainly is gaming content. You know, outside of the racing debrief and some of my racing discussions and things like that, you know, showing off some diecast cars that I got or just a random video. Most of it's gaming content, right? We have uh, some of our RC content that Wani does on his part, but for the most part, besides the racing debrief and RC videos, it's gaming content. So, you know, to have a playable game for my favorite sport would be pretty awesome. I would love to be able to play a NASCAR game on this channel. Um, Juan and I doing a series of that would be brilliant. So, you know, we'll see. 2025, hopefully, iRacing puts out a great product. I mean, they've they've done a good job with iRacing, obviously, being their main game. I mean, drivers use that to simulate for all different types of racing. Um, very serious sim racing. Basically, it's the closest you can get to actual racing without actually racing. Um, so, I think that what they're going to put out is going to be good. I, I looked a little bit at their um, World of Outlaws game. Just on my PlayStation yesterday, I was kind of scrolling through, seeing what games there were. And I was like, oh yeah, this is the game they made. Um, I mean, it looked pretty good. It, I didn't play it, obviously, but I looked through it and some of the images and some of the stuff from it. What I've you know seen watching people's videos, I've heard it's a solid game. So, um, I'm just looking forward to seeing what they do. In 2025, um, that was big news. That was awesome. So, let's get to racing from this weekend. And what series do you want to start with this time? Spin the magic wheel in my head. F1. All right. So, F1. First of all, we'll start with the sprint weekend. Um, so, I didn't end up watching in the qualifying sessions. Um, this time it wasn't due to work. Honestly, I kind of forgot it was on Friday, um, and I was, I went to the store, looked at my phone, I was like, oh, qualifying happened, uh, and then Saturday, I woke up in time to watch the sprint race, I said I played, I was up till like 5am working on videos, so, um, didn't manage to watch that, but, um, there were some issues with tires throughout the weekend, uh, so that became kind of a talking point. Uh, which really can to be a talking point going into Sunday's race. But first, the sprint. Uh, what are we going to say from the sprint? Uh, brilliant race from from Oscar Piastri. What the hell? <laughs> Bruh, what is on my computer? <laughs> Good thing I got this. Um, yeah, brilliant race from Oscar Piastri, honestly. Uh, cool to see him get a sprint win. Of course, it doesn't count as an official Grand Prix win, but... A win in Formula One, I guess, is what we'll uh, go with. So, that, I mean, that was cool. Good to see. Um, of course, Max winning the championship. Basically, he had to get three points between now and the end of the season. So, <laughs> it was pretty much guaranteed uh, at some point in guitar, and most likely in the sprint, uh, that he would win. So, he did win when uh, Checo got taken out in racing Esteban Ocon and Nico Hulkenberg for whatever spot that was. 10th, 11th. Paris had an awful weekend, um, which we'll get into him a little bit later on. Uh, but Max winning the championship, 
that was just brilliant. I was I was thrilled. Um, obviously, Max can't seem to win championships in a normal fashion. Uh, whether it's twenty twenty one with the uh, controversy that was there, or twenty twenty two with nobody knowing if he won because the FIA doesn't know how to implement their rules. Um, plus Charles Leclerc getting a penalty. So all of that. So he kind of found out in the cool down room. Nobody knew when the race was ending in Japan last year. Um, it's kind of crazy actually think because at this point, you know, I was getting ready to watch that race because that was on October 9th. Uh, I was at my brother's apartment and uh, I was staying there for the weekend. So I remember was like, oh boy, we're a few hours away. It was what, nine Almost 10 o'clock, I'm recording right now, so I was ready, getting ready. Um, it's crazy that was a year ago. But um, staying up till I think, 5 in the morning trying to get some items, merchandise. The website crashed then as it did this year. Uh, but, yeah, you had that, and then this year winning in the sprint, which I, I thought was hilarious that he won the sprint just because F1 kind of kept adding more sprints. I was I was all for sprints initially, but recently I've kind of been like, uh, maybe I don't want more sprints. But... Uh, seeing the fact that they said when it was coming out, we don't want to have too many sprints. We don't want somebody winning the championship on the sprint weekend or on the sprint Saturday. Um, and then Max goes and does it two years after it comes out. Um, as a rule or as a racing setup, it's very interesting (laughs) for sure. Um, but I mean, we'll take it third consecutive championship. Not many drivers out there with three championships in Formula 1. So, uh, pretty, pretty impressive. Um, I was just, I was thrilled when it happened. Obviously, kind of knew going into the weekend it was going to happen. But watching it take place, seeing the things pop up for champion, um, it's brilliant. I love it. Um, obviously, I don't think you can really get to that emotion and that excitement of the first time. Again, the first championship was the first championship. Um, it holds a special place, but also just how intense that battle was throughout the year. So I don't think you can get to that. But this has a different meaning of just how dominant this season has been. I think that's where it holds uh, a value there. So that was awesome to see. Loved it. But there's still more racing to go. So on Sunday, it's Grand Prix Day. It was kind of weird, uh, I guess, going into the Grand Prix with the championship being won the day before. But um, going to the race, and basically the FIA said you can only do 18 laps on your tires no matter what it is. If you do it more than 18, you're getting disqualified. You get a black flag and you're out. Um, so if you had done three laps on your tires that you were racing and you used three laps on it and qualifying, you had to then do three less laps on those so you know you took those three laps you had to do three less from the 18 total that you're allowed to do very weird rules but um Qatar that track just has issues with tires did in 2021 um and it has once again in 2023 so we'll see what they do uh with that but overall that was an interesting part of the race sort of seeing that there really wasn't much outside of that besides obviously the first turn where uh, George Russell decides to uh, once again be a problem on the track and uh, you know took out his teammate really hurt Mercedes there so I'm fortunate to see I I mean people are gonna say it's on uh, you know people want to say it's on Lewis Hamilton I don't see it that way um, I think that you know Lewis sort of there on the outside getting close to passing him. George Russell behind Max pulls out, and I feel like he kind of put Lewis in a spot to get taken out. And, of course, George Russell's going to take somebody out because he just does. So, if anything, I feel like that one is on George Russell. But outside of that, the race really didn't have much going on. Very, very hot for the drivers. I mean, you see him coming out of the race, uh, just how tired they were on the podium with Max, Oscar Piastri, and Lando Norris. You could just see how tired they all were. Um, definitely, definitely a hot one for everybody involved racing. Um, 
I mean, Logan Sarge didn't even complete the race. He was that that tired from the heat. So, uh, overall, solid weekend in Qatar. Max winning the championship, though. Uh, really, really brilliant. I was able to get um, the shirt, get one of the hats. Um, I didn't get the one that they had there to wear on the track. I would like to have the one that said Oracle Red Bull Racing on it uh, with a little, like, string on the thing. I got the one for Max's website that was, like, his own design championship thing. Maybe the other one will be available again at some point. But, I mean, the website. I knew. So, basically, I knew going into the weekend. I'm like, okay. Max got a chance to win the championship. In the sprint race. Let's, you know, let's be ready. I have my computer ready. I had the website ready. So, basically, right when they said Max is the champion. I turned my computer on. And I was, you know, almost, I had both my items, picked my shirt size, picked my hat, went to the cart. That's another website, so it started messing up. Everybody was on it. But fortunately, uh, I was signed out of my account, so um, it held my cart for me. So I didn't really have to worry, but I was trying to get it through either way, and I managed to probably like an hour later. So that was good. Um, as for the other Red Bull driver, Chaco. Uh, let's talk about him for a minute here before we jump to the NASCAR portion of our video. And oh boy, did Checo have a weekend. Um, you know, track limit penalties and qualifying really, really hurt him in the Grand Prix. Qualifying and then the sprint. Uh, similar things. He didn't start as far back, but being on medium tires hurt him on the start there. Most drivers that had medium tires fell back at the beginning. In the sprint, he fell back and ended up crashing out. So, just overall bad weekend there. Going to the Grand Prix. He gets three track limit penalties um, in the race. So, loss of 15 seconds just on that. Um, I mean, yeah, it was not a good weekend for Checo. He's got to get something picked up. Looking at the way that McLaren has been, they've scored more Constructors points in the last three races than Red Bull has. Uh, so Red Bull didn't lock down that championship or just wasn't as dominant. Especially at the start of the year. I mean, Checo wasn't as bad to start. I mean, he won two of the first four. Of course, there were things and factors that led to that, especially Saudi Arabia. I mean, I think Max could have won that one, but... There were factors in those, but still, he won two races. He's the only other driver besides Max to win more than one this year, um, and only one of three drivers to win this year. But again, to be in the Red Bull car and have two wins when your teammate has 14? Why is there balloons on my screen? What was that? Let's that go like that, and it worked? And there's no way. If I just go like that. That was weird. Um, I didn't do anything. I mean, I got a message, but it was like seven minutes ago. But, um, yeah. It's one of those things that, actually, my brother right here were talking about it in messages. Um, basically the same thing, that Chaco is not doing well. Uh, performance-wise, and that if he doesn't step that up, Red Bull might not win Constructors' Championship next year, even if Max wins the Drivers' Championship. Even if he goes on the same form or the car is on similar pace, similar dominant fashion, you know, the RB20, if they make that car be as good as the RB19, I mean, does Red Bull win Constructors? Last three races, they've been outscored by McLaren. I don't know. I think that you got to make a move, and I don't know if taking Checo out the car is necessarily it, but I wouldn't be against it. All right, on to the NASCAR side of it. So, I guess there's not really much to say for the Xfinity race. Um, I kind of had some of the things that I was doing throughout the day, so I didn't really get to fully focus in on it. Sam Mayer was in the must-win situation um, and did win it. And um, that's pretty much what i got to say on that race. There's not really any moments that really stand out to me. 
But again, I was doing other things um, on that day. So, let's jump now to the cup race. So, the cup race, Charlotte Roval elimination day, elimination for the round of 12 down to the round of 8 in the playoffs. First thing I got to say is I love Charlotte Roval. I'm glad it's still in the calendar. Brilliant to see. Second thing, the restart zone. I didn't like it. I wasn't a fan of it throughout it. I think the restart zone going through the normal part, the normal restart zone at Charlotte Motor Speedway, I think should be the restart zone. Um, I think they tried it this year. You know, they wanted to avoid crashing. Of course, some of the situations that we've seen on road courses wasn't brilliant throughout the you know throughout the year, especially we've seen at Circuit of the Americas in the beginning of the season. Uh, so you know they tried to mess with some of the restart zones, especially Indy Road Course, which was also a mess. They messed with that a little bit. I think Indy Road Course it wasn't as bad, but I think the Charlotte Roval, the fact of where the restart zone was, right? I think that Indy Road Course. You had a few turns, and then you started down a turn, but you're also going straight, and that's kind of a sweeping turn onto the straight. So it's a straight, sweeping turn, and you're going. So it's not like a sharp turn. This is like a weird 90-degree sneaking turn. So I don't think that's a great place to do a double file restart. Um, so that was the one main thing that I really didn't like about it. But outside of that, I mean, the race didn't really have too much. I mean... There's like a moment that I'm like, damn, that was crazy. Um, I mean, I, I liked it. I didn't think it was a bad race. Um, I didn't have to mute it when Chase Elliott took the lead. Uh, that was a bit obnoxious, just how much they were, you know, hyping him up for 20 laps about how he was the greatest driver of all time um, and all that stuff. But outside of that, I mean, I, I think the race was good. I think that the weekend you had, you know, excitement who was in the limited, who was going to be in. Uh, I think with Tyler Reddick leading the first stage, that had an interesting element to it. And I think uh, Cobbush being close the whole time, he led a little bit. How was that, you know, affecting things? Kyle Larson starting in the back was definitely uh, an interesting factor as well. How would he come to the field? And if he got damaged, there's a good chance Kyle Larson was going to be eliminated. Uh, Denny Hamlin advanced on points mid-race. And uh, then proceeded to get crashed out. <laughs> or crash out or whatever happened. I mean, he got in a few incidents. He didn't have a brilliant Charlotte Roval weekend, but he had enough points going in uh, from Talladega and from Texas to be up plus 50. Uh, he was able to lock himself in pretty much immediately. Um, you know, have a good stage one and two when you're in. And that is what he had and what he needed. So, um, Ross Chastain, Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski and Bubba Wallace are all eliminated. None of those are really shocking, I guess. Um, you know, Bubba Wallace is close at Texas. He could have got a win. That could have shook things up a little bit. Uh, but, I mean, outside of that, I'm not really surprised by any of the eliminations. Brad Keselowski didn't really have many playoff points coming in. So, you're definitely at a disadvantage in that. Same on Bubba Wallace. He had none. He didn't win a stage. He didn't win a race. He's one of the last ones in on points. So, he started 16th on the grid. And it shows when you have that spot, you're typically not getting past the round of 12. Um, just, just based on that. So, you know, I think that starting that 16th spot is going to be hard. So, for him, getting to the round of 12 is pretty good, pretty impressive. I think that he can... You know, maybe go further next year. Maybe get a win or something. Help him in points. That's really what you need. you got to get a win. You know, those stages are crucial throughout the year to build up some points. So, being as close as he was with zero uh, points to start the round was not, not bad. Um, you know, Kyle Busch hasn't had a great round. That was the main issue. I mean, he got three wins, but outside of those three wins... Second half of the year, not brilliant for him. Uh, Brad Keselowski, you know, in a similar spot. He did very, very well on points, but he hasn't got a win this year. So, 
you know, make the playoffs some points, brilliant. But again, he did not have the playoff points to help carry him through. And uh, Ross Chastain just hasn't had a great season. He had that one Nashville win, but outside of that, he hasn't really done much. He started off strong, but kind of after the Darlington issue, he kind of dropped some aggress- aggressiveness after him and Kyle Larson had their run-in, and that kind of just dropped him off from there. Uh, AJ Allmendinger, though, did get the win, which, um, you know, that's cool to see. Cool to see a team that doesn't necessarily, um, you know, get as many wins. They're a newer team, get their second win as a team, and AJ Allmendinger's third career win. So that's cool. I think that uh, talking about him staying in Cup or going back to Xfinity, that's a topic that he gets asked pretty much every week. I think this helps him with staying in the Cup Series. Uh, but either way, thank you for watching. Next week, we'll be discussing Las Vegas. I believe all three series are in Las Vegas. Maybe? I don't know. We'll see you guys next week, though, for the Racing Debrief. We discuss Las Vegas weekend.